Okay, this is going to be an unscripted sort of uh, comparison video. And uh, I just rounded up the three sort of categories I have for these headsets. Start off with the like shittiest one. Hold on. There we go. <clears throat> it's not necessarily shitty, it's just a really low budget option, I think. This is the uh, Windows Mixed Reality. I think this is, yeah, this is a developer kit version, so it's not like finalized hardware, but it's just the only difference is this weird strap over here. And um, so this is not horrible VR. It's just really budgety and like kind of shitty feeling. But it's also the cheapest option, generally. I mean, I think if you're in Europe, this might actually be more expensive than this Rift S thing. So I'm not entirely sure about that. But can I get in the shot? <laughs> um, the problem with this headset is it doesn't have microphones built in. It doesn't have built in audio into strap. It's all around a little shitty. There is a better version of this. Uh, called the Samsung Odyssey Plus, which would be a lot better because it's like compared to comparable to this resolution, but different screen pixel arrangements and like slightly different. I haven't actually had the chance to try that one, which kind of sucks because it's not import. It's not easy to import it without adding significant costs to it, which doesn't seem worth it because I would never use Windows Mixed Reality in general anyway. But uh, it is a good like entrance level VR thing, but it does have limitations. And I think I would not recommend Windows Mixed Reality over the Rift S. Even though I don't generally like it, it is a better budget option. <clears throat> because these controllers are garbage. They're ergonomically absolute dog shit. And I don't understand why Microsoft keeps sticking with that. Because they're not good. And I don't like it. Um, Alright. So, image quality wise, this is actually quite good. It tends to have a higher resolution than this thing. Which is pretty interesting. <laughs> they also made this one run at 90 hertz, which is also quite good. <clears throat> but uh, the lack of audio built in and the lack of the microphone is very much a shit thing for VR. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend getting that. This thing, on the other hand, all oh, right, I didn't even go into the tracking. So this thing has uh, two cameras in the front for tracking. And that makes it easy to set up, but still kind of a hassle because they don't use the pass-through like the Rift S does. They just have the shitty uh, move your headset around the room thing, which does not feel great during setup. It feels imprecise and weird. The Rift S is, uh, in Europe, it would be around the same price as these, which is pretty interesting. It's probably a Microsoft reason for it. I don't fucking know, but being around the same price, this one's actually a lot better because the software experience will be better because it has a setup while you're having it on your face, which is a lot easier to deal with. And... Uh, I did have to add an extra little strain relief band here because uh, this thing doesn't really cut it for me. It pulled on the cable the first time I had it and I thought the unit was broken because this cable slipped out, which is absolute shit. Like you don't want someone who doesn't understand VR to have to deal with that. But other than that, it's quite good. Um, the comfort is mediocre, it's not great. It's because this fucking foam is really cheap and like has a sharp, slightly sharp edge to it, which is a problem I had with the original Rift 2. It was just really uncomfortable for me. Maybe it's my face shape or something, but I don't 
like it. And this thing has like a weird that relief, eye relief thing. I can never get it close enough to my face, so the field of view feels a little lacking. But that might be because I'm used to this now. I don't know. But <clears throat> the overall quality of it is decent. It's not amazing. I would probably want to spend about a hundred bucks less on this thing than it actually is priced at. Because it just doesn't feel as premium as even the original Rift did, which I also don't like, but like different reasons. <clears throat> but software wise, Oculus is actually doing a great job because the setup for this is super easy and uh, it really helps new users get into VR quick, which is quite good. And the controllers on these, a lot of people like these a lot. I'm sort of on the fence. I like some of it, but like overall they feel a little too small and the default grip for this is like these two fingers which is really annoying for me because it like gets crampy after a while if you have to like really tightly grip the controller I usually tend to wrap my thumb around it which I can't really do with the original touch which is why I hate them so much but with these I can so and the tracking robustness of this system is a lot better than the original rifts by robustness I mean the speed doesn't freak out the controllers <clears throat> which is great because my game uses a lot of high-speed movements. There's still some weirdness with the Steam VR implementation of these this headset right now, which kind of sucks because it means there's a slight like smooth smoothing applied to the controllers and the inputs feel maybe a little bit, a little bit delayed. It's weird. But I assume that's going to be fixed when they actually get around to properly implementing these controllers and headset and shit. Hopefully that's soon, but I, I bet they're like busy with launching this thing right now. <clears throat> so that's a little annoying to deal with, but I bet it'll be good once they get around to it. It's just not as important to them as getting this thing to work optimally, because this is obviously their hardware, Valve's hardware. Um... Yeah, so the index, as you can see, it's the only one that's on right now because it's the only one I use. This one I just have sitting around for when I need to test something and then I just unplug it again because it's just not very comfortable for me compared to this. And it just feels kind of flimsy and mediocre overall. Oh, right, the color reproduction on the screen, the screen in this thing is really shitty compared to the, this one. Maybe even this one, but I haven't had this one on in a while, so I don't really fully remember that one. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, having shit, qual shit colors is kind of annoying. Makes me feel like I have to redo color grading in my game to get it to look right on this thing, which I'm not going to do because, you know, it's a cheap headset. I don't really want to cater to these people per se. I just want to cater to the broadest possible audience which means not really specifically doing anything special for any headsets unless it's like really cool to me because that's why I even do things because they're fun or cool or interesting this thing is not it's none of that so <clears throat> the index I really like because it's super comfortable the foam on it is like crazy good high quality stuff it's like just the right amount of soft and like rigidity in it. Whereas this has sharp corners, but also feels really flimsy, which just seems cheap. It's like they skimped on the foam production for some reason. Even though that's constantly in contact with your face, you would think they would like invest a lot of like the resources in that, but maybe Lenovo is to blame for that. I don't know, but Oculus had to prove, have approved it at some point, right? Well, the face padding on this is great, actually. Like the headset padding, I mean, the strap. This feels good. If this was on the face interface, that would have been perfect, but it's not for some reason. Because this feels really nice. It's like soft but firm. It's good. 
It's like this, basically. Um, as you can see, this one has a panel in front. I actually don't like this shiny panel because it gets fingerprints really quickly and dust. And uh, it also adds weight to the front, which, you know, this thing is not super light, but it, that's not really an option, uh, an issue. However, any less weight I can get off of this thing is going to be good. Even though it's not necessarily needed, I just really want it to be as light as possible. Um, the audio solution, this is amazing. This one's kind of mediocre, garbage speakers downward facing. It's not great. It's pretty rough, but it works, which is better than nothing. But this one is actually, you don't want to replace these. They're awesome. They're like really high quality speakers, basically. <clears throat> as soon as I can, I'm going to replace this front panel too. Oh. <laughs> I pressed it with my finger and it fell out. That's usually not going to happen, obviously. Adjustment knob. This one's adjustment knob feels cheap and like the entire mechanism just feels cheap, really. This thing seems like a really introductory headset for people, which I guess needs to exist, but like it's not something you would uh, keep if you really like VR, because it's like a mediocre solution. It's not amazing. It's not the best quality VR has to offer. And it probably never will be, because it wasn't meant to be that clearly. Because these run, this runs at 80 hertz, which not necessarily bad, but not amazing either. It's just mediocre. Like the whole headset is not uh, an amazing headset. Ah, uh, man. Really wish this thing was a lot better because this does not compete with this in any way. <clears throat> Even looking at the prices, I don't know. This one seems too expensive for what it is to me. Like if it was 50 or 100 cheaper, it would be a good fit, but like just save up longer and get this one basically is my advice. The controllers are better too, they have a lot more features and even have finger tracking, which is, you know, pretty amazing. It's not superb finger tracking, it's up and down on each finger, just like gradually, as you can see in my other videos. But it is a lot better than just this touch-based garbage. And uh, this headset is premium. It's amazing, and it's the best VR can offer right now. Too bad it's really backlogged, too, because that's kind of holding people back from getting it, probably. Also the price, because it's kind of expensive. But honestly, for what you get, it's not expensive at all. Because I also have the Vive Pro. That was my previous headset, my daily use headset, with the wireless kit attached. Hold up, I'm touching the microphone. There we go. This has been gathering dust on my little cabinet. As you can see, it has a bunch of dust on it, actually. It's like literally gathering dust. Um, I was using it a lot, but there's a lot of downsides to wireless VR right now. It added massive strain to my CPU. It, uh, I constantly have batteries to charge. And it just kept cutting out randomly. It's not great. And this thing was expensive too. I completely bought this with my own money and it's like, it was 800 something. And I was using it wired for the first couple of months because wireless hadn't come out yet. And it wasn't a terrible experience, but it wasn't amazing either because this thing is bulky. It's even heavier than this thing. It's okay on comfort, but it's not even mind blowing. <clears throat> um, I mean, I would still put this one above this one, but it's price wise, it's not gonna 
be a good value for money at all. And this thing is the whole reason I think this thing is cheap comparatively. Because you just get way more for your money with this thing. Um, but this is a good, decent, like, well, there's a Vive Pro I now, I guess, which is a good thing for someone. Eye tracking at some point is going to be mainstream, so I guess having a head start as a developer with a Vive Pro I would be good, but I don't think I care enough, honestly. The Vive Pro is kind of a uh, meh. It's too expensive, basically. If it was cheaper, it would have been a good headset to have because it has 2.0 lighthouse sensors inside and just like okay lenses and the resolution is decent it's about the same as the Samsung Odyssey it's the same as that Samsung Odyssey which is about the same as these Chivo headsets and it's the same as this one the that resolution seems to be the new standard basically and Oculus is still lagging behind that's funny um, but the Vive Pro I wouldn't get compared to the index because the price is just way off for what you get because the dry the audio drivers in these headphones are mediocre at best I mean the, this sound is probably a little better than this one still but that's because you know it's a way more expensive headset so I guess you would expect that <clears throat> but uh, So, in short, this thing has shit color reproduction. The lenses are okay, I guess. This entire thing is just okay, I guess. It's like not blowing me away in any way. And uh, this thing blows me away in every way, basically. <laughs> the audio is amazing. The lenses are great. The field of view is larger than this thing, and it has a higher refresh rate. I mean, it might be perceived field of view. I'm not even sure at this point, but it just feels a lot bigger. Um, and the comfort is better in this. It is slightly heavier than it. Uh, by a few grams, probably. But the increased comfort makes it a lot better and the higher field of view and stuff. It's just better in every way, basically. I'm not even sure why I'm making a comparison video because they're hard to compare given the price difference and the overall difference in usage. It's just way different. Because this one's merely meh, merely okay, just kind of there. And this one is just the top of the top. Like if I was comparing the Vive Pro to it, it would be a lot more fair. Because this is trying to be this, but it's not. Because <laughs> this has uh, the same lenses as the original Vive, which are just okay. The higher resolution is nice, but it's OLED, so you can still see a lot of screen door compared to this. Even though the colors are maybe a slight bit deeper on this than this, but not by much. And the field of view on this thing is lower. So the overall experience on this thing is going to be slightly diminished compared to this. Not even taking the, the increase in uh, refresh rate into account. Because that refresh rate on this thing is amazing. But it's really hard to explain too. You got to like experience it to really understand how much of an impact it makes. Although, YouTube videos shot at 60 FPS are gonna look better at 120 hertz than at 90 hertz already. So you might, I might make like a comparison shot video of that. At 80 hertz, they're probably gonna be way off too, but 60 FPS video is gonna look better at 120 because it's the half of the frame rate instead of like a third or some weird other number. Two thirds, I guess. 
And the controllers with these things are garbage. I mean, they're the tracking's good, the trigger is good. That's about where it stops. The touchpad keeps breaking for people. Uh, the grip button is small and kind of cramps your hand if you have to hold it for any amount of time. This one has a better grip button on it because it's really easy to press and hold, which would be most of the use case of that grip button anyway. So I'm not sure why Vive or HTC at any point chose to have a clicky grip button because it's just shit. And <clears throat> the trigger on the on the Vive one is great though. And this one's trigger is different. I wouldn't call it better or worse, but it's it seems like it has a different end goal. Maybe. Which is why it looks similar to this one, because it is kind of similar, except that this one is even shittier because it just feels like an empty trigger. There's like an extra click at the end of this one. Can you hear that? There's no click on the end of the five control, uh, the touch controllers, which is why they feel kind of shitty compared to this. The entire controller and headset just feels a lot more premium than this thing, which it should because it is way more expensive to get this one than like any Rift. But I do wish they like maybe made this mat or something. Because even though it makes it look like a car or something like really fancy, if I just touch it with my fingers, you can probably see the smudges on it to some degree. And the extra weight, it's like 20 grams, it's not a lot, but. The extra weight it adds is there, so it, it's probably best to just keep it off. But then you got this hole, you know. Speaking of that hole, I do have a leap motion little holder I made just to mess with the thing. This. Is my leap motion holder thing. And if I plug it in, oh wait, wrong side, duh. Let's see, it is a little fiddly to get in there because it's like quite a tight space. Is it doing the USB thing where you have to flip it around to get it in? Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, there you go. Once you have the USB port in, you can just fucking tilt this up and it's in. Never, it doesn't go, go anywhere and it just runs. It is turned on. You can probably see it on the camera, right? Infrared stuff shows up. I don't know. But this is quite good. And this is just one thing I try I messed with. Uh, any final leap front would probably have this entire grill replaced with something better, because this sticks out quite a bit. It is, I guess, typical for for leap things to stick out that much, but I think it could be better if it was just integrated inside it, like flush. And uh, this Rift S obviously doesn't have any kind of USB port on it, so using a leap with it would be annoying. Just like the original Rift. But overall, the Rift S is and will always be kind of a mediocre headset. I would basically compare this to a, a mixed reality thing. Like as I said before, like how the Vive Pro is trying to be the index, I think Windows Mixed Reality is trying to be this thing. It's just lacking audio inputs and outputs. Like how this thing has it. 
because I think for a basic VR experience, you need good tracking, built-in audio, built-in microphone, and like the screen, I guess needs to be of relatively high resolution. I wasn't super bothered by any lower resolutions, but the higher ones are pretty much nicer in every way. You just don't need it for a good VR experience, I think. Good tracking is more important than good optics and visuals. But it certainly helps. Which is why I like this thing so much. It's like a culmination of everything VR has worked towards. And it's obviously going to get keep getting better than this thing. But right now, this is definitely the best you can get. For, I think, at least another year or two, I would assume. Unless there's some craziness going on with the Vive Cosmos, but we'll see about that. Um, I'm hoping the Vive Cosmos has something cool up its sleeve, because it's a pretty crowded place right now. In, like, the mid-end. And the high-end, too. Because the Vive Pro is just useless now. This is the high-end now. <laughs> but... Hopefully, Vive can stay in the competition so that, you know, people keep competing and stuff keeps getting better because that's what we need, not this fucking mediocre, merely okay entrance level headset stuff. It's good for adoption, it's not good for innovation. And I think VR needs a bit more innovation right now, not more adoption. But, you know, Companies are going to do what companies want to do. And I'm just one developer making a little game for people to enjoy. So that's my comparison video for now, I think. This is just physical comparison. I might do an extra part where I compare the software, but the software for the index is not finalized according to Valve. So even though it is great, it is a little less polished than what Oculus is putting out. So I'm going to wait for this to actually launch or for any big changes in software to come so that before I can actually do my final comparison. But hardware wise, this thing is way better. And if you can afford it or you can save up for it, I would go for this one because it is just better. And it's really just more about saving more money than getting it, than instead of just getting whatever you can afford, I think. Because you're going to want the best. And this thing can still play software from the Oculus Store anyway, so why even bother with the Rift stuff? <sighs> right, so I guess I can technically compare a Quest 2, it's a little bit of a different market segment. The Quest is quite good, but hardware-wise, it could use some improvements. The screens are higher resolution than this thing, which is great. This thing has the same screens as the Vive Pro, which is quite good. And it has the same optics, supposedly, as uh, this thing, which is also better than the Vive Pro, probably. But it's not very comfortable to wear for a long time. So you just sort of have to use it in small bursts and then charge it. Because the battery is also like two and a half hours. You can like amend that with some basic extra battery stuff. but. You don't want to wear it for long. <laughs> That's the problem with it. If it were more comfortable, like if the strap wasn't this flimsy and shitty, it would probably be a lot better. But uh, this is a dev kit, by the way. That's why it's like got weird tape here and has like a dev kit thing in front. 
the Quest is a decent device, but I guess this one is only for if you don't have a good computer at all. If you do have a good computer, why are you buying this if you can get this by just saving up longer? I mean, technically you can't get this right now because it's backlogged or whatever, but I just don't see why people are getting this thing because it's kind of a mediocre overall headset. I would sooner get this thing than the Rift S, probably. If I didn't have any headsets and I just wanted VR, I would get the Quest and probably just tether it to my computer with ALVR or something to get Steam VR to work while I save up for an actual better computer and better hardware overall. So the Rift S sort of sits in a weird place because <clears throat> it's weird hardware. It's like a step stuck in 2018 sort of hardware. This is basically Windows Mixed Reality with like slight improvements which is just going to be okay. It's not going to be great. All right, I think I've rambled on too, not, too long. Uh, so that's going to be my video, I think. Let's see, what is it? 31 minutes, Jesus. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know what else you want me to check out or review or whatever.